I have insurance and so I don't need to focus on anything else other than just my physical well-being because a bike is completely replaceable and the fact that you have insurance and that you're protected and you're covered all you need to do is focus on yourself and getting yourself better like I'm gonna try and I'm gonna take risks and I'm gonna take chances because why else why would you not right I'm Alicia Speak I'm 37 I'm a full-time lawyer but I'm also a cyclist for Cycle Team London the world today. He doesn't need too much of an introduction. He's a lovely lad. He's quick. He's the Irish champion. He's got a massive future ahead of him and a great past as well. Please put your hands together for Mr. Sam Bennett. <laughs> Sam. So here we are. I think before we, we crack on with our chat, um, it's been a difficult couple of months in terms of contract negotiations, etc. So let's just get this bit out of the way. Where are we right now? Hopefully you're in a good place. Uh, currently unemployed. Uh, <laughs> <All right. laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, no, things are going in a good direction and uh, hopefully next week or two we'll have some news. So. That's good. That's good. Because uh, again, heading into the winter, you can focus fully on, uh, on what's ahead next year. And, that, and that's, that's key, isn't it? You need to have your mind right, don't you? That's it, yeah. Um, it's been a hard few months and... Uh, I think, um, yeah, it's in the end, it was an uh, experience I'm happy I went through because it's kind of made me mentally stronger. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's good when you, when you know where you're going, and uh, especially when you know your race program. So, I mean, in the immediate future, I mean, look at those shoes, ladies and gentlemen. He's off to his stag do, <laughs> off to his stag do off the back of this, so he's going to dash. And then, then you're getting married on the 21st. You've got a lot on your plate, haven't you, right now? Yeah, a lot. I um, haven't really been able to help with the wedding, so... Uh, I'm just, uh, yeah, a lot to do with the, the contracts, but yeah, uh, busy off-season. Good stuff, good stuff. So let's just reflect on, on, on this year. As we've touched on, it's been a difficult year. You haven't ridden some of the races that you've wanted to ride. We know that. But despite that, 13 wins, most of them World Tour level. And in the only Grand Tour you won, you picked up two, two stages as well. You must be, upon reflection, pretty happy with the way things have gone this year. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think it's amazing what a, a little bit of a, a fire in the belly can do for you. Um, to get the consistency throughout the season was something I always wanted to get in my career. And um, I kind of learned a lot last year and um, yeah, used it really well. The experience I gained last year um, brought it into this season. And um, yeah, I think it was good. Um, had a pretty consistent year and um, yeah, I, was, I was really happy. I was delighted. And Tell us a little bit about the coach, because I know, speaking to a few other people, that your coach has had a big influence on your performances this year, not just physically, but psychologically. So what kind of relationship have you got with, you, with your coach? Yeah, um, Tara always said he's the third person in our relationship. Um, <laughs> he kind of, yeah, has a lot to say what we do on and off the bike. But um, yeah, no, it's, uh, I had a very good relationship with my coach. Um, I don't know... Uh, I'll do without him now after after this season, but um, yeah, he's been he's been yeah he's after helping me get to this next level. Um, kind of discovered how to train myself. Like as a sprinter, my capacities aren't really exactly uh, as they should be for a sprinter. Um, a few years ago, I was told I shouldn't actually focus on being a sprinter because uh, I don't really have the capacities. But um, oh. I think I'm after. Just move that dip down ever so slightly, mate. There you go, a bit of a oh, tick. Yeah. There you go, that's it. Um, but Jay yeah, um, helped me focus on, on uh, yeah, what I needed to do to become as fast as possible. And um, yeah, I, I just couldn't let the dream of being a, a world class sprinter go. So yeah, he helped me get here. Um, that's interesting you sort of raised that point that you haven't really, you've been told you haven't really got the kind of exact physiology for a pure sprinter. But you can sprint purely in a flat sprint. But this year, I think you showed this kind of like versatility, especially in the Vuelta, some of the most difficult finishes that you'd think would suit the likes of the Poncheurs more. But you've, you've gone really long in sprints. You've, how has, has, that, has that happened? Is it just something that's happened naturally? Is it something you've worked on with your coach or something you've always had in your back pocket but have never been able to display it? Um, I think when you're like, when you get stronger, it just gives you more options. Um, and like when, when, it was, um, when we were focused on the training program, yes, yeah, we, we changed a lot the last two years. So um, 
Yeah, it was something that we knew was possible, but I wasn't strong enough to do it. Um, and then this year, I just got stronger and stronger. And, and when you have results in the pocket, you're not afraid to try new things. Whereas when you're, when you're desperate for results, you don't want to try new things. You just have a plan and you stick with it. Yeah. You just try to get those wins. But then in the end, I could, I could try new things. I could take a little bit more risk in that. If I overcooked it one day, it didn't really matter the next day or whatever. So I, I could try every option. <laughs> I mean, and with looking at the results you've had this year, surely you've got to be thinking at the back of your mind, races like Milan San Remo and stuff, surely that's something that is on the, on the horizon for you, I'd imagine. Yeah, for sure. Um, as a sprinter, like everybody, every sprinter wants to win Milan San Remo. It's like the world champs, uh, besides uh, Champs Elysee, it's like the world champs for sprinters. Um, so yeah, it's something that I, I'd really like to try. Um, this year was the first time I got over the pod, uh, got to the Poggio to race, and. Um, Race the last, yeah, race the Poggio. Um, so I got a lot of experience about it, and it's actually it's a race you have to do for a couple of years to really know when to position yourself and when to use energy because it's so long. So yeah, I think um, I got a lot of good information this year. So hopefully next year I can have a really good go at it. And, and what over the last over the last few years you give you got increasingly better and better, more versatile. But what what have you learned about yourself, sort of psychologically? What, what you know. Have you, do you understand yourself more than ever? Because it's a, the mindset of a sprinter is completely different, isn't it? Yeah, um, I think so. Like I, I think just trying to, to stay on it all year long and not just focus on one point in the year and be more consistent because uh, no team wants a, a sprinter that can't win. Do you, if as a sprinter, you have to win all year long. So just getting a, a healthy balance where... Yeah, you can enjoy life a bit, but you're also you're you're focused and you you, you don't crack dur during the season. Um, that was the the hardest part to keep that consistency. Um, but uh, yeah, I can't remember what I was going to say now. <laughs> there you go. It's focus, mate. It's all about focus, yeah, focus. isn't it? It's gone now. Go. So I'll stay season, focused. I have to turn just, mate, just sit on the wheel. <laughs> sit while I'll just lead you out. All right, perfect. No, no worries. Actually, t t I was I was looking back through some results the other day. Back into I don't know if you remember stage seven of the RAS, mm -hmm. 2009. Yeah. <laughs> Can you remember it was 51st and who won it? Uh, yeah. I was 51st and you won. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I was just, cause I, I remember I was, I was old. And how, how old are you now, 20? 29. 29, so you're, you're basically a kid, you must be 18, 19. 18. Still riding for a club, club team, I yeah. think. And we're coming into the finish. It's a wide open finish, um, dead straight. And I moved out into the wind. Thought, oh, I'll give it. You know, when you, you know, tucked in, you think, oh, it's easy. Then you yeah. move out into the wind. It's like, nah. And you just go straight back in. And you, you must have launched your sprint from like six, seven hundred meters out, just on your own on the outside. Yeah. And I remember you going past about 10k an hour faster than everybody else. And I thought, that lad's special. And, uh, and, and here you are today. It's amazing. I mean, at what point did you kind of believe that you were going to be a pro bike rider? It must have happened quite young. You got a stagiaire with Francie Lejeune quite early on. You went to Sean's team before taking the big step up. Yeah, um, I don't know. I always had like moments where I thought that it would be possible. Like I had uh, European track, uh, yeah, European track champs that I won when I was junior, then the Ross. Um, but it was always like I'd get, I had a bad accident when I was, I think it was 19, where I was hit head on by a car. And uh, I had injuries for three years. So I had like glimpses where it showed that, oh, it's possible. But then I get a knock. So then like for three years it was on and off. And like, yeah, it was kind of like, it was hard for the head. The moments I thought I, I wouldn't be able to make it, but then I get a moment where, oh, it's, it's possible. So for a lot of years it, it was, uh, yeah, I didn't know if I, I would make it, even though I thought it was possible. Sure. Um, I think the moment where I thought, yeah, this, this could ha really happen was when I won um, the stage of Tour of Britain. Um, just because uh, it was, yeah, there was a World Tour riders there. And, um, oh, was that over that really steep climb that dropped down? Is in a group of like... Caerphilly? Yeah, Caerphilly. Yeah. Yeah. Caerphilly Mountain. You had to yeah. the, and there was a group of about 10 of you left. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so I think it was a little bit later where I kind of got the confidence to say, yeah, I, I could be a, a professional bike rider. Um, yeah, but yeah, it was, it was done. <laughs> there you go. And, and what about what about this year? It's, as I said before, it's been a, an interesting year for you. But how have you managed to remain so focused, um, given the fact that let's be honest, you wanted to, you wanted to ride the Tour de France. You didn't you didn't get to ride the 
the, the Jira, where you won three stages last year. I mean, you must have somehow channeled that frustration elsewhere because, as you said, you delivered right the way through consistently win, 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 pretty much every month of the year to the very end of the year. So how did you kind of cope with that? Um, as I said earlier, I think a bit of the, the fire in the belly, but, um, yeah, just I, I, every year I have a target of 10 wins um, because I have, a, like, a, in my career I want to get 100 yeah. wins. So it's like if I get 10, 10 wins per year, I that's, get that's to 100. That's logical. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so... This year it was 13 wins because last year I only got seven. Oh yeah, so you need so, 10 next year, yeah. not seven, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So yeah. So I needed uh, yeah. So I needed 13 wins this year, and um, yeah, I wanted to get that number, and I wanted to be, I wanted to show that I could be consistent because last year, after the Giro, I kind of lost my legs for for a good two months. Um, I just I couldn't yeah, I just went so deep in the Giro that. Yeah, it just couldn't keep going. And it was a brutal Giro as well, yeah. the weather conditions also, and the, court, the parkour. Yeah, so, and then I got a lot of criticism for that, so I wanted to prove that I can do it. Um, and then uh, I just wanted to be one of one of the best sprinters out there, so um, I just wanted to stay focused and prove to myself and to everyone that I could, and that just kind of kept me going. And what was the win that gave you the most satisfaction this year out of all the 13, without listing them all? What was the one that was particularly sweet? Um... I think the Irish national champs. I know it's like... Beating Eddie, because you kept looking around, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. like, is he going to come back? Is he going to come back? <laughs> well, the problem with that is it's the hardest bloody race to win. <laughs> like, the other races, I know are, uh, there's a higher standard at them, but the, the national champs, everybody's looking at you, and there might be only, I don't know, there's six pros in the race. But, like, I, I don't get nervous for any other race, but this race, I could be thrown up in the morning of the race just uh, with nerves. Um, so the Irish national champs, like it took so long to get it, and then to have that jersey, like uh, I'm really proud to, to to get that win. And it, I mean, it does elevate you, doesn't it? it again, you know, you've you've won countless races, you've got this this confidence, but just wearing the national bands and the national colours, going into the welter and putting your arms up in that champion, that's yeah. that's quite an honour, isn't it? And it does give you the ability to do just that a little bit more, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, like I would have said that, like. In the past, a lot of climbers have got the jer the jersey, and um, it's been a while since Ireland had a, a sprinter in the World Tour. So, um, I really wanted to represent the jersey in a different style. And when I got it, I said I'd like do my best to win as much races as possible in it. And um, yeah, when I got it, then I just I just had to yeah just bring it up a notch. <laughs> yeah. So so what about the kind of most difficult time this year in a race? You know, we talk about the highs, winning in the national championships, winning the, winning the national championships. Where's been a point this year that you've been, oh my God, I just want it all to end? Um, the Vuelta, I was going through a rough patch, and um, even the... I remember you telling me, actually, you said you nearly quit yeah. the race, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, like even the, the second stage that I won, the neutral was starting, and I was still in the bus, I didn't want to get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> didn't know that. I was having a, a mental breakdown, <laughs> but... Yeah, I was just having a tough period, so the, the Vuelta was hard, but um, I couldn't let myself down. Wanted to, to win more bike races, didn't want to let the jersey down, um, so I just had to harden up. How did you turn, was that just yourself? Was it other people talking to you, or was it just something that you, you managed to do yourself? I'd imagine there would have been a little bit of, there's some worried faces in the Bora bus when you were still sat there and the race is rolling away. Yeah, um, I don't know, just, just, yeah. I don't know how to get Mac together. <laughs> And, and, and what about the, the pure level of, of good sprinters at the moment? I mean, it yeah. is, the level is so, so high. I mean, look at Caleb. Unfortunately, Caleb was due to be here, broke his tooth, didn't he? Yeah. So in, and he, you can only get a slot at 6 o'clock tonight, so that's a pretty good excuse. Although he's, I believe he's going to make it to your stag do, hopefully. Yeah. But Caleb couldn't be here, but he had 10 wins this year. Yeah. Um, but 13 wins amongst uh, primarily World Tour races, it, it's, it's kind of staggering, isn't it? But the, the level is incredible. The young sprinters, Jakobsen, that's coming through, for example, as yeah. well, who you've been battling with. I mean, it's, it's astonishing. There's a lot of, lot of top guys. Like, I think it, nearly every team has a top sprinter, if not two or three of them. Um, and they're, they're getting to the highest level so quick, so young. Um, but it's, it's, it's good. Like, I often find it's harder when you're only there at a race with one other top sprinter. Um, when it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's harder to win, but when there's a number of you, yeah, it's just chaos. And when I didn't have a lead-out train or a full lead-out train, I could just find my own way. So when there was more guys, I actually found it a little bit easier. But um, 
Yeah, it's, I think it's it's great for sprinting. I think it's great that there's that many uh, sprinters out there now, and um, yeah, hopefully I can be one of the top guys for another few years. And do you do you enjoy the cut and cut and thrust, that kind of that kind of vortex, the kind of uh, the kind of whirling nature of a of a chaotic sprint? Do you kind of do you kind of feed off that kind of uh, the kind of randomness of it all, or, or is yeah. it something that makes you quite nervous, or do you enjoy that kind of conflict and the fact that they are they could be f four or five teams, all with lead out train, trying to head for the final 350 meter left hand bend, for example? Yeah, um, I get both nervous and excited. Like every time I'm coming up to sprint, I'm like, oh, how how did I do this last time? How am I going to do it again? Um, but then when you're coming in the last few kilometers, there's just a, a switch hap like it happens. And um, like I'm a pretty quiet guy, um, but in the sprint, I get really loud and aggressive. <laughs> and I think that's Are you a shouty man out. in the in the final? Yeah, 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 you do, yeah do, do the shouting. Yeah, yeah, I do a lot of shouting. <laughs> um, I throw the dummy out of pram. But uh, yeah, and then um, like I do get a big side like. I find that in normal life to get that adrenaline rush, that excitement out of things is really, really hard. But it's nothing like when you're in a sprint and you're nearly crashing. Like it's just that adrenaline, that buzz, that like when you're pushing and shoving with guys, um, just uh, it's it's great. I mean, when you look at the you know, the style of sprint you are, we've already talked a little bit about the fact that you have the ability to go long, the ability to. I mean, the, that wonderful stage when in the Giro last last year, where you jumped in with about 500 meters to go. I mean, uh, that must give you just that extra level of confidence that even if you lose, lose, lose your lead out train or something doesn't quite go quite right, you've always got like a backup plan because a lot of sprinters, they need to be delivered to the line with 250 to go off, off the wheel of, of, of the lead out rider and that's pretty much it. But with you, you've got a few more options. I mean, you've obviously got a plan A, but you do have this kind of, as we said before, this versatility within all this chaos to kind of d find your own way somehow. Well, how does, is that something you've always had? Um, I don't know that I always have it. I think when you get stronger, the stronger you are, like when you're strong, you're always in the right position. Um, and when the stronger you are, the more things you can try and get away with. Um, but when I was younger, I used to always watch like Robin McEwen and a bunch of sprint yeah. replayed, see where he came from. And he from. could surf, couldn't he? He yeah, could do his own thing. Uh, and that's like, I had two idols. I had like um, Tom Boonen and um, Robin McEwen. So like I used to replay the sprints and watch how guys moved and everything. And I, I really liked how he didn't need the full support of a team. It's always nice to get the full support of a team, but to be able to do it alone is something cool as well. So yeah, you always have those options. Um, but for me, I think it's like a lot of the time I don't even want to make uh, make a plan because then you get kind of blocked in a sprint. If it doesn't go exactly the way you plan, you're kind of stuck there wondering, oh, what do I do now? You've got to recalibrate immediately, yeah. haven't you? So I kind of like to have a plan maybe up until 2K to go or 1K to go and then just let it, let it happen in the moment. Right, right. But, um, I think it's more fun that way. But yeah, we'll see, we'll see where, wherever I go in the future, what way um, they want me to try and win races. Righty ho. So, I mean, how has your success been received in Ireland? Because well, you're from, you've, you are from Carrick, aren't you? Yeah. Carrick on of course, where? Sean Kelly's from. Do you, do you ever have any interaction with Sean? Do you see him much at all? Or was uh, he, again, you're a little bit young for him to be one of your heroes, yeah, yeah. but was he a rider that you also admired? Uh, yeah, well, when I was younger, Sean Kelly was just a, just a sports centre. Like, so I didn't actually know <laughs> what, he, what he did, you know? <laughs> just a sports centre. I love that. So oh. I knew there was a cyclist. I'll, I'll tell him that. Yeah. No, I, 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 I say to you his face. You already have. All right, um, okay. But it wasn't until I went abroad and I was like in the races and I was like, I'm like trying to finish the race and he won it like seven times or whatever it may be like and then you realize how amazing he was yeah and it wasn't until I went abroad and did that then that I realized well, he, was, he was pretty good uh, <laughs> but um so like I have a lot of respect for him and he is one of my idols um but yeah then in, in Carrick um I suppose there's a yeah big cycling culture um, if myself and Sean are around, you could have over 80 riders at the at the bank ready to go out on a Sunday morning. Um, so yeah, it's big there. But I think in the in general in Ireland, cycling isn't a, a big a huge sport, so not many people know about it. <laughs> and what do you reckon to the other top Irish riders around? Where Eddie Dunbar? I mean, he's a, a real talent again. Another ver not a sprinter, of course, but another versatile talent. Would you think about any other kind of up and coming Irish riders that you've that you're aware of, that you've got your eye on, that think could really take it up to the next level? Yeah, I think Eddie, for sure. Like, he can win the week-long stage races. I think he'll get 
top fives in a in a grand tour. I, I'm like I'm sure he'd be up there for winning one if he like in the yeah in a few more years. Um, of course, like he's still developing as a rider, but I think Eddie's he's an amazing rider, a huge engine, and uh, really willing to learn. I think he's going to be something something amazing. Um, and then yeah, there's always uh, a lot of new guys always coming through. I think is it um, Healy. Uh, one uh, stage in Lavenir. Oh yeah, the right, right for the Wiggins team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so there's always new guys coming through, and um, yeah, I just yeah, it's great to see. Um, the more Irish pros we have, the better. So yeah, I just hope it continues to grow. And um, what about the other classics? Talking about you know Milan San Remo, because of the style of ride that you are, although you can sprint, you've got you're deeper than that. Have you ever thought about the cobble classics and stuff like that? Is that something yeah. that is maybe on the horizon a little bit further on, maybe as your yeah. sprinting kind of changes that? Because that yeah. does happen, yeah. but you've still got this big engine. Is that something yeah. that you've got the back of your mind? I, I always do, but it's like, it took me so long to get to this level. Like right. when I had so many injuries earlier in my career, I always feel like I'm three years behind. So I'm just trying to get the most out of myself now. Um, but I think like, yeah, the, there will come a time where I'll start to slow down, but I hope that I can just change it a little bit um, yeah. and go into that style of racing. Um, but yeah, it, it is possible, and with the the, cap the capacities that I have, that's where my coaches said that I should kind of focus more on, and that I'd be kind of better at that. But I, I just want to be a sprinter. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I mean, we've uh, I spoke to Greg LeMond yesterday, and he's he's on um, in a, in a, an hour or so's time, and he was saying that he never won a classic, won the the World Road Championships twice. And he said he would trade one of those rainbow jerseys for Paris Roubaix. So, what would you rather win, Paris Roubaix or the World Road Championships? <laughs> well, just out of interest, because he kind of yeah, I'll give one of those jerseys it's, away it's for Roubaix. It's, it's just easy, quite interesting. It's easy to give one away when you have them. Like. Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's a good um, tough question. I think. Oh man, it's tough. Um, man, isn't it? Yeah, like to get to wear those rainbow bands for a year, yeah. like it's a bit, it's a bit glamorous. Yeah, <laughs> and and you are a rider that you think I oh, could could win the win the bands, to give it get the right sort of course, the way you're kind of developing, you know, that's uh, that's the reality, right. isn't it? It would have to go really right. I don't I don't know if I'll ever be able to do that, but um, I can I can dream. Good stuff. Well, it's been absolutely fan fantastic speaking to you again. Hopefully next year we'll uh, we'll deliver. Maybe well, what's your Ten wins you need next year to get back onto kind of even, even keel again. Ten, ten wins would do, but uh. <laughs> well, it's been it's been a pleasure. You take care of yourself and have a cracking stag do, and I'll see you very very soon. Put your hands together, these was Mr. Sam Bennett. <laughs> Cheers, nice one, mate. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, please do hang around because Orla is up next and it's the second session of our Desire Presents the Innovators and they'll be on in just a couple of minutes' time. But thank you very much indeed. Cheers.